In a previous video I explained that only direct children of the grid container become grid items. The specification does actually have a method of specifying that a grid item becomes a subgrid. This subgrid value is a value of display. So we take our example of nested grids here. This grid subitems is the nested grid, it's applied to the div here, so the items here become grid items on the nested grid. Now we'd remove any grid definition and we'd just say display subgrid. And what would happen here is that the grid here, these subitems, these children, could then follow the grid declared on the parent, so they could lay out below these items here, for instance. Now that isn't implemented in any browsers yet, and it may well be removed from level 1 of the specification. However, currently implemented in Firefox and being implemented in Chrome is another value of display. It's not part of the grid layout spec, but I think could be very useful used alongside it. If I change this value of the display property to be display contents, I'm working in Firefox here, which supports display contents, and you can see how the outer div seemed to sort of disappear from the layout there. And now the two items inside, A and B, are sub-items, are acting as if they're direct children of our grid. And this is what display contents does. It removes the boxes generated by the item it's applied to. So if we remove display contents, you can see the box, and this is this div here that's got the class of subitems. And if we put it back, the box disappears. What you can see though is that the background color, the other styling on these elements, which is set up here, that remains. So it's just the box generation that's affected by display contents. This works with flex items too. And once it's got better browser support, I think it'll prove to be a useful method of keeping semantic markup, yet allowing nested elements to participate in a flex or grid layout.